here is a public plant, hive mind, connecting us all in by law, with microchips in our brains by 2025. We're looking at the literal realization of a military police state in America. The American people have failed in their oversight of the integrity of our political system. The entire economy will be prisons, police in black ski masks, a Nazi Germany-like nightmare. The final target is the American people. We need to break that connection between the police and the military. They're charging people with weapons of mass destruction because they have marijuana. I support the Constitution, which puts me at odds with my own party. There really is an Illuminati. There really are 13 families. They own the big banks and print the money. They're in our universities and they're in our congresses. And they believe in, in one world government. And plunge the American people into the deepest economic abyss of a generation. If we have, or when we have another attack, uh, it, it looks like they'll come with more legislation. Again, problem, reaction, solution. Over and over again, government uses crises to scare the population into submission. That is so important to understand. Speakers varied, but opinions towards the Patriot Act rarely did. That is, until we interviewed Assistant U.S. Attorney Ron Siever. The very first thing the Patriot Act does is allows the FBI and the CIA and Department of Justice and other agencies to cooperate with each other and share information so that we can make sure we can spot, identify terrorists, and hopefully prevent Why have 300 House members then rejected it? But in the middle of our conversation, activist Alex Jones called the assistant attorney a liar. Section 802 affects all citizens. It's for all crimes. It's for, it's for, it's for, it's for, it's for one marijuana cigarette. These guys have read it. Have you read it? Of course. Can you respect this guy over something? No, you know how this stuff works. Guys, I'm not going to sit here and hear this guy spew lies. You can do your interview after I do this. See, this is, they don't want to talk to me. You need to answer real questions. You need to answer real questions instead of lying. And you know, earlier I talked to you, you know what's in Section 802. You know. Can you guess your title again? He says the Patriot Act gives law enforcement permission to search homes without warrants. And now under the new Patriot Act, they have sections where they say our officers need not even need these administrative subpoenas or warrants. They can just carte blanche, go anywhere they want for any crime. The status of warrants is the same as it always has been. To do a search of a residence, we have to go to a judge and show probable cause, and a federal judge has to authorize it, and there's no chance. That is not true. It clearly says secret. Thank you, we will take liberty at all costs. Hey, guys. That was Veronica Obergone reporting. Meantime, some Central Texans, as you could hear in that piece, are still struggling with the effects of the Patriot Act. More than 600 detainees remain inside the United States military facility at Guantanamo Bay, suspected of involvement in the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and the September the 11th terror attacks. They are in legal limbo, held without charge or trial, and not recognized as prisoners of war. That is a guarantee. Because, because as the New World Order turns up the heat, they're going to form more resistance. The tighter they squeeze, the more people are going to have that light bulb go off above their head. Now, I believe this council is made up of good people, and I think it's great that uh, Jackie Goodman, Mayor Pro Tem, has brought this forward. Let's go through the facts. And John Ashcroft and Lord Bush and their military-industrial complex owners who are setting up a military dictatorship, I mean, this is admitted, PNAC documents, cannot hide the reality of what's happening. And you know what's in Patriot Act Two, Section 501? You fit the description of a terrorist under Section 802 of the first Patriot Act, you can be arrested and secretly executed. That's right, a three military judge panel. Now what is Section 802 of the first Patriot Act that passed on October 27, 2001 at 5 in the morning when no one was allowed to read it, according to members of Congress? The definition of terrorist is any action that endangers human life that is a violation of any federal or state law. They have many other definitions about anything that influences government. Go read it for yourself. They're counting on you not reading it. They're counting on you not finding it. Ron Paul and others have pointed out that Hitler and Stalin and people didn't have the nerve to put stuff like this down on paper. They just did it. That's what's so amazing about this. And to see the assistant U.S. attorney here uh, peddling this is really sad, but I know it's under orders. This is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. So this is why we restrict the scope and size of government 
and its power over us in our lives. Because we know there's criminals on the street, we know there's bad people, but they don't have the massive mechanisms, the machinery of government and military and militarized police and prison complexes to oppress at levels never before seen. Last century, 200 million killed by government. 200 million killed. Millions of American Indians, Native Americans, killed in this country. So don't tell me we, don't, we shouldn't have a concern when the most draconian legislation in the history of the world, dwarfing Byzantine Spain and France, is rolled out against the people. Now, I could list the crimes... I could list the crimes of the FBI, the Defense Department, state police, local police, all day long. My point is, history shows us that we must watch and we must control and we must limit powerful men. Because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I challenge, I challenge members of this distinguished body to be part of history, to not abstain, to get out on the field in your life and you'll truly be alive to not sell out to this corrupt system. Now, I've got about nine minutes left. I'm going to try to go through these points because they're all very, very important. Section 213 of the First Patriot Act lets them break in your house or any business and take whatever they want or plant whatever they want and not tell you for six months they were there and they're administrative. They're rubber stamps. They aren't for Billy Bob's house because we think he has this under the Fourth Amendment. They're for everybody. They're for whole classes of people. And now under the new Patriot Act, they have sections where they say our officers need not even need these administrative subpoenas or warrants. They can just carte blanche, go anywhere they want for any crime or suspected crime. And the spokesman for the Justice Department just a few months ago, after Ashcroft admitted, okay, there is a Patriot Act too, went before the House of Senate, and this was in the news, in the Associated Press, and said, well, yeah, we're going to use this in all crimes, all drug crimes, everything, misdemeanors, uh, third-degree felonies, everything. That's on the record. U.S. attorneys, deputy attorneys, assistant attorneys, all these people, they're saying, yeah, we're going to use this for everything. They're, they are using it for everything. The Victory Act, which is a continual salvo in this attack on the American people, clearly states that any possession of a controlled substance is an act of terrorism under Section 802, pointing back to that enacting clause. Well, it endangers human life. It's a weapon of mass destruction. They've actually got articles in the news about, oh yeah, they're charging people with weapons of mass destruction because they had marijuana. We don't want to be part of this. This is crazy. People disappearing in the middle of the night. I mean, what did Alexander Schultz and Nietzsche say in Gulag Archipelago? Oh, how we burned in the camps later, wishing that when the secret police went out at night to come to our doors, we would have met them. Met them downstairs with pokers and axes and daggers. It's, it's well in excess of 400 cities and towns. It's now four states. I mean, it's been in 140, 170 for, what, six months in the news? A more propaganda. Can't the press get anything right? Can't this, control, this controlled corporate whore machine get anything right? <laughs> the Tenth Amendment time and time again. And it's clear, it's clear, the Nuremberg trials showed this, that you do not have to follow an unlawful criminal order. Blow that person's head off and stick them in an oven. No, you don't have to. Torture these Vietnamese women to get answers from them. No, I'm not going to do it. Take this smallpox inoculation. We said so, police officer. 99 plus percent have said no. They're starting to get wise. You can't stop people getting wise. It's happening all over the place. The tyranny's too great. And it is scary, and we need to be scared. So we can get involved and stand up. That's what fear is about. Getting you moving, not hiding under the pillow, not hiding under the bed. General Rick Baucus, you should have heard about the statesman, but of course you didn't. Brigadier General over Camp X-Ray resigned. He said, I'm not going to be part of torturing these people. These aren't even Taliban or Al-Qaeda at this base. This is all a big show. And he left. You, did you ever hear the head general said, I'm not going to torture these little kids? Well, most of them are like 12. That's sick, folks. And nobody even knows about that. Nobody even knows about that. That's Associated Press. That's the reality of what we're dealing with and facing. So I'm asking the people of this council, the citizens of Austin, 
to join us and to do the right thing and again to be part of history. Please do it. Do the right thing. Please don't abstain. Please vote and reaffirm the Bill of Rights and Constitution and the soul and heart of America. And again, I want to thank all of you for being here.